Jupiter's Great Red Spot is an unfathomable but impressive badge, proudly worn by the solar system's crown jewel planet. It's an enormous storm, easily the biggest on any planet in the solar system, and is one of the most striking and recognisable planetary features out there. It might come as a surprise then that this behemoth is actually shrinking and might even completely disappear. In this video, let's take a look at how the Great Red Spot is changing, and then we'll explore the latest findings on Jupiter from the James Webb Space Telescope. The Great Red Spot was first observed in the 1600s and has been an ever-present bruise on Jupiter's face ever since. Since I'm going to say it a lot, I'm just going to affectionately call the storm Red, like a cute dog. But this dog is finally entering its golden years. Red is a massive hurricane on Jupiter. It's an anti-cyclone, meaning it's an area of high pressure that has persisted on Jupiter for centuries. It sits towards the top of the Jovian southern hemisphere and penetrates hundreds of kilometers downwards. This is quite a lot. Given that hurricanes on Earth are often 100 meters deep or less, red also produces wind speeds of up to 432 kilometers per hour, or about 270 miles per hour, which is incredibly fast. Something that I didn't realize for quite a long time, probably longer than most astrophysicists, is that red is shrinking. We've been continually monitoring the storm for over 150 years, and its size and shape has changed a lot over that time. Check out these comparison images that were put together by Damien Peach, and it all makes it so clear. All the way back in 1891, red was closer to a sausage than a spot, and its shrinking is pretty clear as we move towards the modern day. Even just in these last two images, from 2003 and 2023, red is noticeably the smallest it has ever been. Also, take a look at these images from the Hubble Space Telescope. The first from 1995, the second from 2009, and another from 2014. In this final image, red has a diameter that's slightly larger than Earth's, but when the storm was first observed, it stretched more than three times this distance. The earliest measurements from the late 1800s put red at 25,500 miles long on its longest axis. Today, it sits at just about 10,150 miles wide, we got a great view of RED2 in 1979, when the Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 spacecrafts flew past this planet. At the time, they measured the storm to be 14,500 miles across. And if we work out the rate at which it seems to be shrinking, it's about 580 miles per year, and it's also become more circular too. We don't know exactly why this shrinking is happening, but we have some good ideas that we can explore, and we can even look at storms on Earth to try and learn more although Earth and Jupiter are fairly different. On Earth, hurricanes tend to lose energy and dissipate when they reach land. Most hurricanes grow in power, as they're fed by moisture and heat over oceans. When they reach the land, they're starved of these things, and they can rapidly lose energy and disappear relatively quickly. On Jupiter, though, there's no such land for red to make landfall on. The storm has lasted for centuries, partly because there's nothing for it to run into, so it can keep swirling away. In truth, we don't know the exact reason for its shrinkage, but it's possible there's some activity in the atmosphere that's draining energy and weakening it. It could also just be that the weather patterns that previously maintained the vortex have lost stream and they aren't feeding it as much energy anymore. One theory is that the various eddies nearby are interacting with red, altering the dynamics and energy of the storm and accelerating these changes and shrinkage. All this together does mean that red probably won't be around forever. Whether she has years, decades, or centuries left, we can't quite say, but do enjoy the view while you can. Also, I only just learned this, but we don't even know why red is red. That really surprised me. We can see the color changing over time, varying in brightness and in hue, but its red origin isn't known. It might be thanks to chemicals being broken down by ultraviolet radiation from the sun hitting Jupiter's upper atmosphere or simply due to the presence of specific molecules in the clouds that shine brightest in red light. Anyway, I just want to zoom out from the storm a tiny bit for a second and show you some new images of Jupiter's moon Io. I always think this moon looks a little bit like a baked potato, but Juno, the probe currently checking in on Jupiter and his mistresses, recently flew very close to Io and took some great new images. Just take a look at how pretty the moon is, and finally we see it not looking like a microwaved root vegetable. There's even a ferret sort of animal outline just here. Let me know if you can spot that too. It's not just Juno that's been looking at the Jovian system though, and JWST recently gave us some new info on the planet too. We've seen images of it before from JWST, 
but now it's going even deeper and telling us about the wind speeds in different layers of the atmosphere. The telescope has discovered a 3,000 mile wide high speed jet stream traveling over Jupiter's equator above the main clouds. The jet is traveling at 515 kilometers per hour and it's about 40 kilometers in altitude in Jupiter's lower stratosphere. The Jovian atmosphere is layered, and here we can see that JWST has the power to reveal information about these different layers. Specifically, it has mapped the wind speeds at different altitudes and pressures, allowing us to isolate the high-speed jet. A day on Jupiter is only about 10 hours long, which is actually so fast that it's the reason for the stripes on the planet, as gases are separated out by the rapid rotation. And the three observations used here were taken at 10 hour intervals. This is a day apart and was done so JWST could keep imaging the same patch of planet, but do so with a different wavelength of light each time. The different wavelengths penetrate to different layers and can teach us about how things change as we go deeper and deeper. For example, a wavelength of 2.12 microns gives us the ability to observe between altitudes of between 20 and 35 kilometers above the top cloud layer of Jupiter. Here, we're able to spot several areas where the wind speeds change with height and distance. This image here is highlighting several of those features across Jupiter's equatorial area, and over 10 hours, these are clearly distributed by the motion of the jet stream. Shoot me any questions in the lower atmosphere of this page, that's the comment section. And thanks a lot for watching. Until next time, stay safe team. I'll see you soon. Bye.